Hello there and welcome back to another one of my thrilling videos. It's great to be back. So today, as you've already probably figured out, I'm looking at the Olympus Mu, one of the holy grail cameras that I was hoping to find. And as you can see here in all of its splendor, uh, I was very fortunate to pick one up at a very reasonable price. But just before we jump in and have a little bit of a closer look at the camera, here's a little bit more about the camera. So the Olympus Mu, uh, also known as the Olympus Mu Stylus, was launched to market in 1991. It was a bare bones 35 mm point and shoot camera and made no apologies for doing so. It was incredibly popular, with some estimates stating that it sold well over 5 million units worldwide during its time on sale. I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. Um, it has a fixed 35 mm lens and a fixed aperture of 3.5. Now I can't find its exact price when it launched in 1991, but I've got some examples here from 92, 93, 94, and 95. Um, and uh, the camera seems to fluctuate somewhere between 100 and 150 pounds. But in the order that I'm showing you now, it goes something like 102 pounds, 150 pounds, and then they're listed in the Argus catalog for uh, 140 pounds. So uh, yeah, it seemed like the market dictated that. Um, so uh, without further ado, um, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the camera and I'll tell you how much I actually paid for it. Okay, so just before we have a closer look at the camera, if you're interested, this camera takes, excuse me, a CR123A battery and it shoots a uh, 35 millimeter film. And for this particular shot, uh, I used Ilford FP4 uh, black and white film, which I can show you right here. And that's what I shot on last time. So that's what I shot. And I think next time I might run some color for it. Okay, say hello, Olympus Mew. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, so I picked this camera up uh, quite recently, uh, 23rd of June, 2023. Now we get to the part where I reveal how much I paid for it. Well, I found this camera in a charity shop and the price was not as high as I would have expected. Now I still have the sticker from the sale, which I will show you now. I'm just gonna get that. And this was what was on the camera when I purchased it. Yes, you read that correctly. It was four UK pounds. And uh, funnily enough, um, I almost uh, missed it. I was uh, in a local charity shop, uh, otherwise known as thrift store in the United States. And I was just browsing the electronic section, couldn't see anything, put my head up and literally, no word of a lie, it was straight in front of my eye line. And I was like, <gasps> I just grabbed it straight off the shelf and uh, yep, yeah, and the rest is history. Um, so yeah, all right, so without further ado, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the camera. Okay, so when we look at the front of the camera, let's start from left and work our way to the right. So first and foremost, as you can see here at the top there, that is your flash, nothing that thrilling. Here, this little area just here, this little square, that is the self timer signal. Okay, these two square windows here, they are your autofocus windows. This little square just here, next to one of the windows, is uh, your light sensor. At the bottom here, you can see a tiny little button. That is your film rewind button. Um, and that's pretty much it for the front of the camera. Obviously, you, you can see it says Olympus lens, 35 millimeter, 3.5 for your f-stop or your aperture. Um, you know, shut the camera up. It's very po po pocketable, very portable. You can see that this lens just comes out ever so slightly when you open the camera, as you can see. Um, so let's go to the back of the camera. Well. Um, I'm sorry to say, but there is really not much here to look at. You have your viewfinder, which is right there, and then you have your autofocus indicator and your flash indicator uh, just here. So for example, if I turn the camera on and I hold it down, you'll see that they're coming on to indicate. The one at the top is your autofocus indicator and the, uh, the one below is your flash indicator, the one in the orange. So I hope you can see that okay. So let's go to the top of the camera. Uh, we should have the camera on. So here we have a number of flash options. So let's talk about the flash options first. So at the moment, ignore the E, that basically just means that the, uh, the camera has no filming it, uh, in it and it's empty. 
So let's look at the flash. So at the moment it's on flash auto, so that is quite self-explanatory. The flash will go off automatically. Press it again and we go to auto S. Auto S um, basically helps to significantly reduce uh, red eye phenomenon. Um, if we press it again, we turn the flash off. And then if we go to the last setting, which is called fill-in, fill-in basically means that the flash is always um, active or will always be activated and the subject that you're trying to shoot will be properly lit. Uh, so they're your flash options. Um, now, this one here is self timer. Now I was playing around with this um, just before making the video because I didn't use this whilst I was out shooting. And I noticed that when you press it, nothing actually happens. And I wondered if that's maybe that you needed a film in the camera. So if I press it, you'll see that nothing will happen. But I've actually just found that what you have to do, if you want to do a self timer, you have to hold the self timer button down and then press down the uh, shutter button. Actually, it'll probably be easier if I turn it around to face you so you can actually see. So I'm gonna press down the self timer button and the, and the shutter button. And there you go, there you have it. And then you're just kind of gonna get queued up uh, by the timer light. Any second now, everyone get in shot quickly. <laughs> and there you go. It's a little bit temperamental. I found that I had to kind of press it properly otherwise you could uh, you know you could accidentally take a picture but I found the best way to do it is just basically make sure that you just press them press that down firmly and then press that shutter button down and there you go so you must make sure that you press down that timer button firmly because otherwise what can happen is that you can you know for example go to do it and then take a shot accidentally so just be, be aware of that so we're going to shut that okay so um, yeah going back to the top of the camera um, that's it. You have your shutter button here. A um, couple of things I'd just like to mention about the shutter. Um, the shutter shouldn't release uh, when you're too close to a subject, but it can occur, occur excuse me, erroneously. Uh, that's actually from the manual. So it has got a built-in sensor that shouldn't allow you to take those pictures when you're too close to a subject, but from time to time it will fire, so be aware of that. And one last thing I just want to mention about the shutter button. Um, I was just reading this in the manual. Um, if uh, you hold your finger halfway down um, on the shutter button, just like you would do on modern cameras, that enables focus lock. Um, when that's active, it allows you to position your subject outside the auto focus frame. So um, if you wasn't aware of that, um, that's how you do it. So if you want to position them outside of that frame, uh, then you can do so. So um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It is a very bare bones camera. Um, there really isn't much to it. I should just show you inside. It's very clean. I was quite pleased with how clean it was uh, on the inside. Very clean. Uh, no particular problems encountered whilst out shooting. Um, oh, and there you go. And there is a good example of the mechanism rewinding. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, what are my thoughts uh, on the Olympus Mew? Well, um, I must say that Considering the hype and the buzz around the camera, I didn't particularly feel uh, connected to the camera. Um, might be any number of reasons for that. I have been quite busy. Um, it just felt like a very sturdy, reliable little camera. Um, but now that I've you know, got one and paid kind of like, you know, the price it should be for a camera that sold five million, these should be very cheap to pick up on the market. Um, so, you know, if you're lucky enough to pick one up, you know, um, really, I wouldn't recommend paying more than £20 for them. Um, the pictures were okay, and I think, you know, you'll be able to have a look um, at those shortly. Um, what I did notice from the pictures um, was that a lot of them were slightly blown out so that the flash was almost too strong in nearly every setting. So I had to just ever so slightly colour correct them and just kind of bring that brightness down ever so slightly. Um, Details really nice. Some of the pictures it got was really fantastic, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's better than a lot of other cameras that I've shot with. So let me know what you think um, in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think of the pictures. Do you own an Olympus Mew? What do you think of yours? So this is me and I am signing off. See you later.